Just days before Virginia voters select their next governor, new polling indicates the race will be a toss-up. A Washington Post poll shows Democrat Terry McAuliffe with 49 percent and Republican Glenn Youngkin with 48 percent among likely voters. In a race this tight and this down to the wire, every vote counts. And in this case, there is a third party candidate, a black woman named Princess Blanding, who holds 1% of the support. Blanding entered politics after the death of her brother, Marcus Peter, uh, Davis Peter, David Peters, a school teacher who was shot and killed by Richmond police in 2018 while he was experiencing a mental health crisis. As a candidate representing the Libertarian Party, she advocates for banning police unions and defunding the police. Blanding's campaign also calls for state-funded reparations for black Virginians and reforming the K-12 curriculum to reflect the centrality of black and indigenous histories and culture. A percentage point may seem modest, but as the Watson Center po uh, polling noted, in this virtual tie, third-party candidate Princess Blanding's 1% share of the vote looms large. Joining me now to discuss is Princess Blanding, candidate for Virginia governor. First of all, I just want to say, you know, my condolences on the loss of your brother. Uh, that said, I mean, your candidacy is very interesting because it hits on a lot of the issues that black people say that they care about the most in polling. Tell us a little bit about why you got into this race and, and what you think about your chances are. Absolutely. So um, I decided to run for governor due to the continuous failures of the two party system, um, specifically those failures of the Democratic Party. You know, historically, the Democratic Party has taken advantage of the black vote of the votes of our most marginalized and vulnerable community members and of the working class. And so I decided that, you know, we can no longer beg our oppressors to be our savior, you know, and that we have to expand our fights from the streets into the seats of these key elected positions. And I just want to make one clarification. Um, I am running under the mm -hmm. newly formed Liberation Party uh, that I am the chair oh. of. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Glenn Youngkin has made the education in Virginia part of his closing argument, and he is basically rallying the truth, basically trying to excite white women in the suburbs who might have been voting Democratic, but who feel, you know, he can make them upset or angry or scared about schooling and what is taught in schools and whether or not they have a choice in, in, what, that, in what that curriculum is. Part of your platform is around uh, education and curriculum, but is in the exact opposite direction, pushing more of the history of black and indigenous people into that curriculum. How do you respond to what he is doing in his closing argument uh, in this race? Sure, absolutely. You know, um, both the Democratic candidate and the Republican candidate, you know, they're being very, very divisive. You know, I am a, uh, you know, veteran educator. The critical race theory is not taught in our schools should it be absolutely you know how can we uh, make sure that we do not make the same mistakes if we do not teach our children you know the harms and the dangers uh you know of our past and so that's something that we absolutely have to move forward to uh, we have to make sure that we're inclusive you know and that we are encouraging diversity and acceptance and again if we intentionally continue to omit you know teaching the truths of our, our past, of our history, then we will not be able to prevent ourselves from making the same mistakes. You know, and I do want to just take a millisecond to state that, you know, the polling that you quoted earlier, understand that my name has been excluded from over 90% of the surveys. However, my name is tagged on to the results under independent or other candidate. And so that data is very skewed and the Democratic Party is going to have a lot of questions to answer once we do win this election. You think it's skewed, meaning you think that your percentage of the of the likely voters is higher than the one percent? It absolutely is. I know that for sure. Again, you know, fact check me, please. You know, my name is excluded from most of the surveys. However, it is tagged onto the independent or other. The other thing that we have to address is that you know I am getting bombarded with messages from community members across the state, and it's not only saying that 
uh, you know, my name's not included, but I had someone recently inform me that my name was included. They had to click three times. And then when it finally uh, registered, uh, you know, my name, it followed up with, are you sure you are an undecided voter? You know, so a lot of political games are being uh, done. The University of Mary Washington um, conducted a survey that said I was only polling at 2% yet. Uh, at the very bottom of that survey, it said that 26% of those who were surveyed identified themselves as being independent. So these are all scare tactics to make my supporters think that we cannot win, um, you know, and to, to, to cause them to be fearful of voting for me as they have identified me as a spoiler. What we do know is that a mass mobilization to the, po to the polls for Princess Blandon equals a win for every last one of us, and that's what they're fearful of, and that's why they're bringing all of these celebrities in, you know, from Obama to Stacey Abram to Harris to Pharrell to try to convince the black voters and most marginalized voters to vote for a candidate that clearly can't uh, carry this election on his own. And I'm referring to Terry McAuliffe. Right. I understand as a candidate, every candidate in the race, the reason that they're in is they believe that they can win it. So I, I understand your position, and then I, I take uh, your correction of those polls. Uh, but do you understand the, the kind of panic that's happening now among pollsters and strategists over your candidacy? They say you can't win. They say you're going to be a spoiler. That They say that you're taking votes from the same pool that would otherwise be voting for McAuliffe. How do you respond to that? Um, you know, the Democratic Party needs to understand that they are not entitled to our votes. It is their job to earn our votes. I am not considered a spoiler. You know, if we want to have a conversation about a spoiler, the Democratic Party is considered a spoiler because they are very selfish and they feel that they are entitled to our votes. However, they continuously under deliver. People are tired of being put in a position where they have to choose between the lesser of two evils. You know, Terry McCullough does not fight for, nor does he represent you know, the votes that he's seeking, you know? So again, it's all about, you know, the narrative that is pushed out. And if people are truly concerned that me running is going to cause the Republican to win, then I advise them to have a conversation with Terry McCullough and tell him to step down. Because again, I am the chair of the Liberation Party and we are right. not going anywhere. We will continue to expand our fight from the streets into the seats of these key elected positions to claim what we rightfully deserve. Has anyone from the Democratic Party at all, on any level, contacted you, asked you to step out of the race? They have not. Good. Princess Blanding, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and good luck.